Hello, hello there, my name is Richard from Silent Peak and welcome to this 2024 look at Adobe Lightroom. Now, Adobe Lightroom is a funny one. On one hand, I love what Lightroom has to offer. But on the other hand, I find it difficult to recommend. And this is probably for two reasons. First, Lightroom is subscription only. This means you cannot buy Lightroom outright and that you will never ever stop paying for it. Second, Lightroom is quite expensive, particularly when compared to its cheaper rivals such as On One Photo Raw and DxO Photo Lab 7. That being said, I believe Lightroom is somewhat underrated and that for many photographers, Lightroom is the best photo editing application out there. So in this review, we're gonna have a fresh look at Lightroom, see what it does well, see what it does not quite so well, and find out whether or not Lightroom is for you. If you'd rather find out for yourself, you can, and in the description below, there is a link to your free Lightroom trial. So let us begin with Adobe Lightroom's catalog view. Now, as you can see, the catalog view is very clear and well presented and highly responsive. It does all the usual things you would hope a catalog view does, such as enabling you to view and QA your images, assign them a rating, tag any number of keywords to any given image or group of image. And unlike previous editions of Lightroom, we can now access images directly from local disk rather than just the cloud. Lightroom also has one of the best search systems I've used. Simply type in your keyword, such as bird, and Lightroom's object recognition powered search will crawl your photo collection, returning any photo that features said bird. Now, as you might expect, Lightroom enables you to create albums to which you can assign any number of images. In this case, I am using my bird images and assigning them to an album called Birds. At this point, we can then share our album either to everybody using the designated link and we can customize so we can give certain rights to those who access it, such as the ability to add comments, download the images or view metadata. Now, having established our album share, anybody with the link can access the album via their favorite web browser, browse the images, leave comments, and even download the images if you've set the correct permissions. Brilliant for sharing your photos with friends, family, and clients. Yet none of this is to say that Lightroom is perfect. For example, jumping between three different tabs to view all the information any given photo has is just unnecessary. And while you can geotag your photos in Lightroom, you need to access a third party app such as Google Maps, copy the coordinates, and paste them into Lightroom, after which a little map would pop up and you'll know exactly where the image is taken. In contrast, photo editing applications such as On One Photo Raw have a map view built in, making the whole process much easier. So is Lightroom good for photo editing? Well, yes, it is. Now, if you're new to Lightroom or photo editing in general, the first place you might begin is presets. Regarding presets, Lightroom is an embarrassment of riches with more presets than I count. Fortunately, Lightroom's AI system assesses your photo and recommends which presets it thinks will work best with your image. When it comes to doing your own edits, Lightroom is packed with all of the usual adjustments and then some. So for example, here, we're just boosting up the exposure, lifting the shadows, reeling in those highlights, and also flexing some tone curves. Critically, Lightroom is fast and responsive, reacting to my adjustments in real time. Lightroom also features a generous array of targeted adjustments. With these adjustments, we can make changes to our photo by interacting directly with our image instead of dragging a slider. So in this case, we are using the color mixer to adjust the saturation, hue, luminosity, and brightness of the various different colors by selecting the colors directly. Compared to dragging a slider, targeted adjustments offer greater precision and overall a more engaging, pleasant, and simpler user experience. 
if you are looking to apply adjustments to specific areas of your photo rather than the photo as a whole, Lightroom comes equipped with various different masking brushes. But perhaps the most useful is the automatic masking, which with one click will automatically mask your photo's subject, sky or background. Now, one of the benefits of Lightroom being a cloud-based application is that not only can you access and view your images over your favorite web browser, but you can edit them as well. Here, I'm editing one of my images uh, via Firefox using a photo editing studio that thereabouts replicates Lightroom itself. Here, I'm boosting exposure, lifting shadows, altering white balance, and doing all the usual stuff that you need. Now, the editing experience can be clunky at times, depending on your internet connection. But if you do need immediate access to an image and you're not exactly where you need to be, this is a great get out of jail free card. So what else does Lightroom do? Well, quite a lot actually. Here we are looking at an early access version of Lens Blur. Now, lens blur, as the name suggests, enables you to blur your subject's background, thus simulating sort of the pro portrait look. Now, I am not claiming that this sort of digital representation is a sort of alternative to fast aperture lenses, uh, but it is much, much cheaper. And unlike with such a lens, you can apply background blur to photos that you have already taken. In many ways, this is similar, though not quite as good as Luminar Neo's own Portrait Booker AI, but nonetheless, it is a nice feature to have here in Lightroom. Lightroom also has AI Denoise, a highly competent AI noise reduction tool. Now, as good as it is, it does fall slightly short of the very best, namely DxO Pure Raw 4 and On One No Noise 2024, but nonetheless, it is an incredibly close race. And when you consider that AI denoise is basically a tiny fraction of your overall sort of Lightroom subscription, you really have to consider this an absolute bargain. And it is good enough that it might just be the only noise reduction tool that you ever need. Sadly, I cannot say the same about super resolution Lightroom's image upscaling tool. For one, it is limited to 200% upscales, and the only way around this is to upscale your image, export, re-import, and then upscale the upscale. But even if you're content with 200% upscales, the image quality falls far short of the very best, namely Gigapixel 7 and Topaz Photo AI Free. Thus, if you want the very best upscaling performance, Gigapixel or Topaz Photo is the way to go. While Lightroom's super resolution falls short, its erase brush certainly doesn't. Having tested Lightroom's generative AI erase brush against the very best from On One Photo Raw, Topaz Photo AI, DxO Photo Lab 7 and Luminar Neo, I found that Lightroom's erase brush offered the best and most consistent results. So your subscription to Lightroom, complete with one terabyte worth of cloud storage, will cost you nine US dollars and 99 US cents every single month. Projected over a three year life cycle, that means that Lightroom, which is the blue line on this chart, will cost you just over 350 US dollars. In contrast, you can buy On One Photo Raw outright right now for $99 and it will never cost you more than $99 no matter how much longer you own it. Likewise, DxO Photo Lab 7 Elite is still considerably cheaper than Lightroom as is the more expensive Capture One Pro. But is this a really fair comparison? Let's try looking at it through a different lens. In this comparison, we are factoring in the cost of one terabyte worth of cloud storage. Now, let's assume that cloud storage is important to you for the sake of either backing up your photos or enabling remote working, and that you wish to subscribe to one terabyte of cloud storage, regardless of which photo editing application that you buy. A quick Google revealed that the market rate for one terabyte worth of storage is around about five US dollars a month, 
We then add that to the cost of our lifetime purchases of On One Photo Raw, Photolab 7 and Capture One Pro, extend it over three years, and that will reveal that Lightroom is now become our second most cheapest option just behind On One Photo Raw. Now, this particular comparison is only relevant if you care at all about your cloud storage. If not, Lightroom still remains quite an expensive option. It also means that if you're planning on keeping your photo editing application even longer than three years, Lightroom will once again become more expensive than its competitors. So as you can see, Lightroom is a very capable piece of software that does everything very well indeed. Its cloud integration is unmatched and its core features are up there with the best in class. But there is no getting away from the fact that Lightroom is indeed subscription only and that it does cost a bit more than its alternatives. Thus, whether Lightroom is worth it very much comes down to your specific needs. Now, at this point, I would like to tell you that I am indeed an Adobe Lightroom affiliate. Then again, I am also an On One DxO and Skylum software affiliate, which means I'm kind of impartial through saturation. But if you would rather not take my word for it, you can try Lightroom for yourself, and I recommend you do. And to that effect, there is a link in the description below. If you would like to know more about Lightroom or any of its alternatives, do feel free to drop by Silent Peak for in-depth reviews and comparisons. If you like this video, thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment. I do hope you liked this video, you found it useful. Good luck with your choice and I wish you a very good day. Bye-bye.